Hey guys, welcome back, and it is time for a spring camp out. Now I just got here, I still gotta get everything set up. Stay tuned. Okay, so on this trip, I tried to pick some gear that I don't take out very often. So you see I've got my Alice pack here, and it's been a long time since I've consistently used one of these just because they're so heavy and they don't actually pack as much as most of your other packs. But you see kind of how I've got it set up. I've got my compass here, two canteens, one on that side, one on this side, one quart canteens. Both of them have the canteen cups, and I've got my... Uh, Helicon poncho here. This is going to be my shelter. I've also got my poncho liner on the inside. Uh, I did bring a light sleeping bag that's packed in here. It's more or less just kind of a sleeping bag liner just in case it does get that cold, which usually it does out here in the spring. You have crazy temperature swings out here. And uh, yeah, let's get that set up. And I also have uh, some mosquito netting because the bugs out here are just relentless already. So without some kind of bug netting up, you're gonna have a bad trip. And I'm not out here to go crazy with this stuff. I'm out here to have a good time. <laughs> and one thing I should mention, some of you guys have used an Alice pack for a long time. And you know how waterproof this thing is, which is not very. <laughs> and in case you're new to it, one thing you always want to do if you're going to use an Alice pack is use some type of internal bag to keep your gear dry. Now in here, I've got an actual dry bag. This will keep everything really dry. These last for a long time. Or you can go cheap and just use a trash bag. They don't last too long. <laughs> but you definitely got to use something uh, to keep all your gear in good working order. Otherwise, if it gets rained on, it's going to get soaked. Alright, so the basic shelter is done. Now I just gotta clean it out so it'll be comfortable on the inside. You get a bunch of stuff like this to clean out. You don't wanna lay on that. Alright, so now just gotta figure out a good way to suspend this uh, mosquito netting. Alright, so it's done. Check it out. This actually worked out better than I expected. You can kind of see how I've got this put together. We've got our poncho. I've got our suspension line that comes up through the grommet around a stick that's holding it in place and then back down. That way I can just use one long ridge line here. And these uh, mosquito net loops, these little metal loops here. I've just got those tied onto these uh, sticks with some inner strands of parachute cord. There you go. And it's just about the perfect size for this poncho. I'm really happy about that because this is just like really cheap mosquito netting. Cheapest stuff you can find. And you see our other uh, Piece here. This would normally be shaped kind of like a cube, if you can imagine that. This would be the other end of the top. 
fits just about perfect with the middle grommet here on our poncho. And then for the one on the inside, the middle there, you might be able to see it's pulled up into the inside of the hood and just wrapped around and suspended on this line and pulled tight to this tree here to give us some extra room on the inside of our shelter. You can kind of see how that looks. But everything came together real easily. I just used some pieces of wood here, some small sticks for some stakes. Now it's not going to last through a hurricane or nothing, but we should be all right. Yeah, it actually, it don't look too bad. So hopefully this will give us enough room to stay reasonably comfortable and maybe we won't get mosquitoed to death. <laughs> Alright, so this is what it looks like on the inside. <laughs> there you go. See, we're not really losing any room here. This is just draped over. To come in and out, you gotta pull it up at the bottom. There we go. Pretty happy about that. Got my fire set up, ready to go. Got my bird's nest here. It's all processed cedar bark. My bow drill set. There we go. I'm not 100% sure this is gonna work, but the worst thing that can happen is I gotta do it again. <laughs> all right, got everything laid out here, ready to go. Small stuff, larger stuff, larger stuff still. If that starts burning, and we can start in on the wood from the wood pile here. All right, so let's get this going. All right, got my trusty deer antler bearing block. Let's give this a try. Alright, so the bow drill set that I made last time is still not completely dried out. So I'm going to use some of this uh, poplar wood and hope that it's good to go. <laughs> All right, so we've got a little bit of our bird's nest material here, this processed cedar bark. I'm using about half of it for this fire. We're just gonna use a ferro rod. This is my poly striker. 
see how well we do. I actually don't like using the striker on here. I think I'm going to use my knife. And for this, I'm going to use our Air Force Pilot Survival Knife. See how we do. So we got a pretty good fire going. Took a ferrule rod to do it, but <laughs> hey, had to at least try the bow drill. First set that I used, still just a little bit too green. I really thought it would have been dried out by now, but as soon as I started carving into it, I could tell it had just a little too much moisture in it. In the second set, it's dried out enough, but it's too rotten. As soon as you get going good on it, it just burned right on through the hearth board. But hey, we got some good practice with the ferro rod. <laughs> but heck, even with that, my gosh, that took probably 10, 15 minutes to, to get it going. And cedar bark did not want to light. And that was throwing some crazy sparks in there. And even with all that, it still took a while before one of them finally caught. Hey, that's why we practice. So for dinner tonight, we have a mountain house. This is beef stew. Hopefully tomorrow we get a fish or a squirrel or something to cook up. <laughs> Alright, getting ready to boil some water here in my canteen cup. I'll show you guys some tricks. Now, 
you're gonna cook on the campfire, you know, there's a lot of soot that builds up on your cookware. One thing you can do to keep that down is use some camp soap and just smear it around the outside of your cup. That'll make the cleanup a whole lot easier. Just want a thin film of it on there. Not that it matters too much, but some people want to keep their gear looking like new. There we go. Now, uh, a lot of people don't like cooking in a campfire with these canteen cups because you got to get your hand a little too close there and you can end up burning your hand. And one cool thing about these older cups that have this uh, L style handle here, there's a little slot right there. I'll show you what that's for. This is the fork that comes in the USGI mess kit. Fits right in there. There you go. <laughs> now you've got an extended uh, handle. So that makes it handy. <laughs> right, we got our water in here. Got our coals raked out. Now we just wait for it to boil. Oh, this smells so good. <laughs> well, guess what? Camera battery died. <laughs> so I'm on my backup camera now. The good news is, this is really, really good. Good morning! Actually, it's the afternoon now, but I've been up since about 10. I've been trying to work on these bow drill sets. Let me show you what I got. Now, I've got a few different sets here. The top one is the one that I started with. It's cedar. This one is also cedar. And they both seem to be just a little bit too green. You can troubleshoot your sets by the type of dust that you're making. You should have a fine black dust. And what I'm getting with both of these is a fine brown dust, which would mean that the wood is either too hard, which cedar is not too hard of a wood for a bow drill set, or it means that you're not using enough pressure. I'm using the same amount of pressure I always have. Or it means that there's too much moisture in the wood. So there you go. These two sets in the middle here are poplar. And with those, I'm not even really getting a dust. I'm getting like long black grainy pieces. And that would normally mean that you're using too much pressure or that the wood is too soft. And poplar is a really good wood to use, but if it's too soft, that means that it's just too rotten. All right, so I think what I'm going to do is take one of these sets home with me and dry them out inside, get that moisture content a little bit uh, further down, and then try it again and see if that makes any, any big difference. So, like I said, I've made more bow drill fires than I can count. And uh, 
apparently just the humidity and the conditions out here is just surpassing my skill level or I'm just picking the wrong pieces. But we'll see. All right, so on to the shelter. It did really well. Very satisfied with this. I did have a few bugs in there with me, but they were mostly the crawling type of bugs and not the flying type of bugs. So I think they were probably just living in the leaves down here. Uh, and then whenever I put the bug netting down, they got trapped inside. But the uh, poncho did really well. It was big enough uh, that I didn't feel too cramped inside. It kept the dew off of me. Um, it, I did get kind of cold last night. It actually dropped down to the 50s. And I've got this uh, 40 degree bag in here. Which is not really a 40 degree bag. <laughs> I just, I mainly use it as a liner for my, uh, my better sleeping bags. But hey, it says it's 40 degrees. Uh, but, you know, for a comfort rating, you've got to add another 10, 15 degrees on top of that. It was just barely enough to keep me warm. And then I've got my poncho liner, my wooby, under that. And the two of them together made for a fairly comfortable night. It was mostly kind of chilly because it was just clammy. It's really, really humid. Uh, but this morning, whenever the sun came out, kind of burned off some of that humidity. It got a lot better, so I slept in. <laughs> All right, so I think what I'm going to do next, I found this really cool grub here, and I think I'm going to try some fishing. Stay tuned. That didn't take long. <laughs> That's pretty nice. I think he's a little bit uh, too small to keep. I'll throw him back. There we go. Another small one. Not bad. Yeah, look at that. That's a nice one there. Cool.
go. <laughs> a little bit smaller than the others. They're still fun to catch. Right up next to the bank. <laughs> Man, it's been a good day. All right, so we didn't keep any of the fish that we caught, and that's because it's getting pretty late in the afternoon, and this camera's about dead too, so I gotta wrap things up. <laughs> Overall, I had a great trip. We had some uh, success, we had some failures, we tried some new things. Uh, I didn't get as much on camera as I thought I would be able to, but overall, I had a great time. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and until next time, thumbs up. <laughs>